There was no program, no set list. Matt Heimovitz just came out from the wings of the American theater, sat down, carefully placed his end pin, and launched into the Richer Car No. 5 by Gabrielli. The singing tone of his 1710 Gefriller cello was rich and dark and brought out all the nuances of a piece written 30 years before Bach's solo cello works. As Heimovitz said, Bach didn't come out of thin air. The prelude from Bach's cello suite number one followed, satisfyingly familiar and beautifully played. Before beginning the nine movements of Ned Roram's After Reading Shakespeare, Heimovitz called the composer the Franz Schubert of America for his many songs, noting that Roram has remained staunchly tonal in the face of academic atonality. He gave the Shakespeare quotations at the start of each movement, beginning with a quote from Lear's last speech. The music brought to life the Mad King's grief in eerie high notes contrasted with querulous caprice and bass grunts ending in a long fingernails on a blackboard glissando into silence. We don't have time to delve into every movement, but these were outstanding. The fourth movement, Caliban's Curse from the Tempest, time of it's described as an atonal palindrome in retrograde. It was frenetic, physical, edgy, anything but peaceful. For the seventh, the composer quoted Sonnet 60, so do our minutes hasten to their end clothing the thought with high, busy harmonics to a very fast, febrile, and abrupt end. The final movement follows the false Iago's last line, caught in lies he can't deny he stonewalls, and the cello speaks with intensity, dissonance heightening the tension, and a weirdly disturbing glissando to a high note that disappears. It's an extraordinary suite by a prolific living American composer, played with extraordinary passion by a cellist equal to its demands. The second half also began with Gabrielli, this time the Richercar No. 1. Heimovitz then turned to Elliot Carter, now 103, saying his thorny music often turns people away, adding casually, if you don't like it, it's over in five minutes. Thorny was a good description of Carter's 1994 work, Figment, Lyrical bits interrupted by violent single pizzicati and effective use of overtones, plaintive double stops, and an abrupt ending. Think theremin meets giant rubber bands, and you're pretty close. John Corigliano's fancy on a Bach air had drama and power. It was passionate yet pensive. The second part was slower, softer, and just lovely. In 2001, Heimovitz commissioned David Sanford to write a commemorative work for 9-11. Imagine, he said, a hybrid between a saxophone and a Jewish cantor on the streets of New York as the buildings collapse behind. Strings of fast notes, brutal plucking, eerie repeated phrases, impossibly fast, shrieking glissandos, and then a slow, evocative assessment of damage. Not easy listening by any means, but challenging? Absolutely. Heimovitz turned his bass string down to B for Argentinian composer Osvaldo Golihov's Omarama, which called up the back alleys of Buenos Aires with big swinging bow strikes and fragments of pop song. Heimovitz finished up with a new arrangement of the Beatles' Helter Skelter, by Luna Pearl Wolf, the cellist's wife, who's a composer who, in her own right. It featured flashy technique and percussive effects. The cello squealed, protested, sighed, sang impossibly high notes, sliding up and down, shrieking like the sour scene in Psycho. And I think it was part of the arrangement, actually. Heimovitz bawled, I've got blisters on my fingers, which brought down the house, of course. One thing I notice, the more I listen to 20th and 21st century music, preferably live, the better I like it. From the other side of the footlights, I'm M.D. Ridge. <laughs> 